um, <clears throat> up to chapter five, we were doing um, sort of basic trig stuff, right? Um, figuring out what angles are, figuring out what radians are, um, figuring out what sine and cosine are, right? Those are the two base ones. And then uh, picked it up at the very end to find out what the other four were, right? Right? What the heck tangent was, cotangent, secant, and cosecant were, and how they work inside triangles, right? Okay. Um, today, we're going to start uh, moving along with a trig in terms of graphing. So we know what sine and cosine do, but what are their graphs? We know that there's at least one thing that exists that gives us some sort of geometric or um, graphical interpretation. That's the unit circle. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, five, two. Like I said, you guys should have this out. If you haven't printed it out yet, that's okay. Um, but do so soon because we are going to start covering a lot of this stuff. So in particular, we're going to start covering so for example, come on, there we go. We're going to start graphing this stuff, or we're going to start seeing this stuff, um, that stuff, practically all of this. And chapter seven and eight deals with all of this stuff right here. Why the heck we have all of that? Okay. So, the stuff that looked insanely foreign before will suddenly not become foreign because we're going to cover it. Okay. Okay. So. We first let's, let's go ahead and recall. My computer's acting up a little bit. Oh well, that's why. Let me go plug myself in really quick. Okay. <clears throat> so we know from last uh, from last chapter that cosine gives us the x and sine gives us the y coordinate, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to take each one of those separately, and we're going to see how they uh, land on the um, uh, on the XY plane by themselves, not together. Okay. So, uh, we're going to just find out some points to begin with. Okay. So a lot of these points come from your unit circle, this thing, right? So sine of pi over six is one half, uh, Pi over four is root two over two. Pi over three is root three over two. And then pi over two is one. So we'll go back to, so sine is zero, one half, uh, root two over two, root three over two.
uh, one. And now they start to decline from here, right? So this is going to be root three over two, root two over two, one half, zero. Uh, we're going to jump to three pi over two, which is negative one back to zero. Okay, so now what the hell does that look like? So we'll start here. Let me uh, get rid of that. There we go. We're going to start here at 0, 0, right? At pi over 6, it's a half. And then it goes to, oh, pi over 4 is not here. Um, pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, so that's about 1.7 up there. Pi over two is one. Okay, then we go back down half zero. So there we go. Okay, then we're going to skip down to three pi over two, back up to two pi. Chat box. So the reason why we put it under the square root is because that's the exact answer. Um, if you turn it into um, a decimal value, uh, that is an approximate number. So that's why we keep it under square roots. Okay. It's easier to remember that way, OK? OK. <clears throat> so what I want people to concentrate on is on these five points. This one, this one, this one, this one, and that one, right? And those five points are those five, OK? And if we go back to kindergarten to connect the dots, OK, so notice the five sort of like the, these five points right here are the ones that we're going to be tracking sort of left and right um, for this section, OK? So we're going to do the same thing with uh, the cosine graph now, right? So. Let's go back to our unit circle. So for cosine, it starts at one, goes down to root three over two, uh, root two over two, one half, down to zero for pi over two, right? And then it goes negative one half, negative root two over two, negative root three over two, up to down to negative one, okay? So it starts at one, goes to uh, root three over two, root two over two, one half, zero, right? And then we keep going, root, oh, whoops, sorry, negative one half, Uh, negative root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, negative, uh, negative 1. Now we're going to jump again. This is going to be 0. And this is going to be 1. Okay? So back to our picture. OK? 
okay? We're gonna plot these points now, right? So at zero, it's actually one. At root three over, or sorry, um, at pi over six, it's root three over two, which is about 1.7. Or sorry, 0.7, sorry. Um, root two over two goes right here about, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it goes back down to, at pi over two, it's zero. So I think I got these wrong right here. I think that's supposed to be down there. Okay. Down to one half. No, I'm wrong. Down to about 0.7 to one again. And then we're gonna do the last two, three pi over two is zero. And then at two pi, it's one. Okay. So there's sort of a, a nice collection of points there. And then we go back to kindergarten, connect the dots. Okay, and same thing, these five points right here. Whoops. those five points right there. And they match up with the same ones from the table before. Okay. So these five points, okay, which are the ones that land at zero, uh, pi over two, pi, three pi over two and two pi, those are the most important ones. We're going to be following those around left and right for the rest of this chapter, okay? <clears throat> so there goes some pictures of them, right? So all I did is I graphed just from here. Actually use a nice red. I graphed from here to here. So notice it's just one version. It's just one squiggle, right? But from uh, the previous chapter, the uh, angles that we can plug in, right, they can be positive and negative. So this squiggle ends up repeating itself on both ends, right? And likewise for cosine, I just did this one squiggle right there, right? That was just that one squiggle. <clears throat> but because the number of angles that we can plug in are infinite, right? This thing keeps squiggling that way. And then same thing this way, it just keeps squiggling in the other direction as well, okay? These functions are called periodic, okay? And they have a period of two pi, okay? And what a periodic function means, right, is that it repeats it repeats after a certain amount, right? So after we go to pi, right, the graphs for sine and cosine just repeat over and over and over again, the same squiggle. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do domain and range. So let's see how many of you guys got this. Uh, what's the domain of sine and cosine? Anybody got a guess? Mm-hmm, infinite. 
So remember how I said, right? We can plug in any angle to sine and cosine. Right? So the domain is negative infinity to infinity for both of them. What's the range? What is the range? Negative one to one. Including or not including? Including. Right. So remember, these are the x's, right? The domains are the x's, and the range is the y's, right? So for sine and cosine, both of those values bounce between negative one and one, right? So down here, this is as far down as it goes, which is negative one, right? And this is as high as it goes, which is positive one, right? And then same thing for, signing, uh, for sine, right? It doesn't go any higher than one and it doesn't go any lower than negative one, okay? Uh, the last two things, sine is odd and cosine is an even function, right? So an odd function is symmetric about the the line y equal x, right? And cosine being even is that it's symmetric about the y-axis. So let me erase some of the doodles that I have here, right? So if I stick in y equal x, okay? Uh, just how uh, we were doing with uh, odd and even functions uh, back when we were doing polynomials. Um, you can flip the graph along the uh, origin for sine and you'd get the same uh, you'd get the same graph back. Okay, and then same thing for even for cosine right grab the cosine graph and flip it along that axis right there, right? And you get the same graph. You guys got it? Okay, uh, just like before, uh, if you guys need to stop me for something, stop me. Yep. This is making sense to you guys. Okay. We're going back to um, chapter one again. So now that we're in the graphing phase, right? Um, we can still use all the stuff that we were doing before for the stuff that we're doing now, okay? Um, there are uh, there are general forms of sine and cosine. Uh, those are the ones that I just highlighted. So if, usually when you see a sine and cosine equation, they're going to look like that, okay? Both of these equations, well, all of these equations are called sinusoidal. They're sinusoidal uh, graphs, okay, or functions. Whoa. Okay. There's a bunch of stuff that we learned about in chapter one way long ago. That's like, what, two and a half months ago. Um, that still applies here with a couple of changes. Okay. So. 
let me actually go back over here. So you remember when you guys had um, g of x um, is equal to plus or minus a. times f of x minus h plus k. <clears throat> you guys remember this? Okay, there was one, two, three, four things, right? What was the plus and minus do? You guys remember? what the plus and minus did. Well, this plus or minus, not shift. Not stretch compress, we're not there yet. Right, this one was the flip, right? So that plus or minus gave you the flip. Right, the A, the one right next to it, right? That was the stretch compress and it was in the vertical, right? Okay, the minus H did what? So this one right here, right, shift left to right. <clears throat> and remember that rule, right? This one is opposite of the sign. So if the sign was negative, you had to move it toward the positives, right? And if it was positives, you need to move it to the negatives. You remember that? And then the last one, what's the plus K do? Right, that's the up or down. Okay. So, Watch this. Yeah, it's gonna be. So remember how I told you guys back in the day? Uh, it was hard that, like, during that time, right? That you're like, I can't remember what all these things mean. Oh my god, I'm gonna fail the test. No, oh, no. Right? We are in the Mr. Miyagi moment. So. The amplitude is the A, and that's why we gave it the letter A, okay? Um, what's the positive do? What do you guys think that does? Or what do you guys think the negative does? Either one. Right. So the positive tells you it stays the same, right? The negative tells you to flip it. Okay. Like I said, there's a couple of changes, but not too many. Okay, the period, right, of a function is given by uh, two pi divided by b, whatever that b might be. Okay. And then the phase shift would be that c divided by b. Okay, and the same rule applies here. Uh, it would go opposite the sign.
Okay. Now, uh, I rewrite the equations in this form over here this time. Okay. Particularly because of this section right here, this section right here in the middle. That's really the only big difference, right? Uh, the reason why is because you can get your phase shift that way. Okay. <clears throat> and the vertical shift is given by, no surprise here, is that D. Okay. And the midline is the Y equal D line, whatever it is. Okay. Got it. Okay. Let me go through each one of these on the graph itself for sine. Okay. So that A is that amplitude. So from here to here, however big that distance is, right? That is the amplitude. Okay. The period is two pi divided by B. So however long this distance is from here to here, is given by your period. Okay, so this right here would be 2 pi divided by b. Okay, phase shift. Okay, if you need to grab the graph and move it either left or right, right? That amount is given by that C divided by B. And that goes for all the points, right? Because if you sh shift the entire graph, you shift all the important points, right? Okay. And then finally, the last bit, vertical shift, okay, is where you grab one of the points, well, all the points, and shift them either up or down by an amount D. Okay. And then lastly, there is a midline here, right? So you guys take a look at this line right here. I'm going to draw it in, actually, I should draw it in that nice neon blue. I should draw it much thicker than that. So, you guys see that line right there? So that's what's called the midline. Okay, and depending on your shift up or down by D, right, the equation of that midline changes. Okay, so, As an example, right, uh, we're going to find the midline, the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift for this function right here. Okay, and I've given you the graph for it already. We're going to do it by looking at the graph and then by looking at the um, uh, by looking at the equation as well, okay? So, amplitude. Let's do it in the order that was given to us up above. The amplitude is always that front number, whatever that is, right? So then the amplitude there is three, okay? And if you notice on the graph, 
right? It goes from one to four. So that means the original graph was stretched by three. Okay, uh, period. Uh, we usually use the variable t for a period is two pi divided by whatever the b is. And in this case, the b is that two. So that is gonna be two pi divided by two, which is pi. So this tells me right here, that thing tells me that uh, I should have one squiggle of my sine graph happening between zero and pi. The, the distance between the beginning and the end of one squiggle should just be pi, right? And lo and behold, right, here's pi, here's zero. So we have one squiggle, right? that happens from zero to pi. So the distance in which one squiggle happens is pi, okay? Phase shift. Does it look like it got moved? Up and down, yeah, but side to side, no, right? So there was no phase shift and that is sort of uh, verified in our equation. There is no plus something, right? Okay, but let's say we had, let's say two X plus pi over two, right? I'm pretty sure this is a question on some of your guys' minds right now. What happens if we had something like that, right? we'd have to factor out a two. So this would be two, right? Times X plus let me write it nicer, pi over four, okay? So if we multiply this in, right? So two times X would get us our two X and then two times pi over four would get us back our pi over two, okay? So if we had something like two X plus pi over two, right? Then this would be our phase shift right here. So it would move toward the negatives by pi over four. Okay, but for this problem, since there isn't anything for us to factor out, right, we don't need to do anything for it, okay? And then finally, midline Our midline is that red line that goes straight through the middle, right? So that is y is equal to one. So that means our d was equal to one. There was a vertical shift upward by one, right? And that is verified by the plus one at the very tail end there, right? And that our midline is right there. Okay, are there any questions about this? This is gonna be tough. I keep saying that, and then you guys ride through it, no, no problems whatsoever, but this is gonna be some tough stuff. Okay, so I've got a nice little quick check here. So, 
I'm going to give you guys, this is going to be a little, this is going to uh, wreck your brains a little bit. So I'm going to give you guys maybe a good 10 minutes to work on it. Okay. And uh, I'll call you guys back so we can verify. Okay. Um, your breakout group will assign you the problem that you are going to be doing. Okay. And go.
I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, which one did you guys get? You guys are group four, right? Yeah. Okay. So. Can you get it's me in, so it's it's more stretched in, so that means, and like it's not as stretchy as the example you just got that you just gave us. Okay. So I'm thinking it's like a two. How do you know it's two? Uh, I have no idea. It's How less stretchier it? than three, and it's not as stretch or it's not as uh, straight as it being normal. So how about this? What's the midline? Uh, one. Okay, so we got the midline. How much above does this graph go? Uh, How much up, below? Up to three and down to negative one. Right. So if the midline is one, right, and it stretches up to three and down to negative one, what's your amplitude? It's two, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you got the two, right? I don't know. It's it's a cost. Um, it's a cost uh, graph, right? Because it's going down first. Uh uh. No, it's a sin line. It's a sign, right? Oh uh, yeah, sign. So look at the base. Is it a? Is from, it? Is it a from, negative then? Exactly. Why negative? Because it's going. It's going the other. It's starting off the other way. Right. Instead of going up, it's now going down. down. Yeah. Got it. How do you know? How do you know when it's a negative and a cost? Does it go the same way? Exactly. So, uh, negative cosine, right, will start. So the regular cosine, right, mm -hmm. starts from up above, drops down, and then goes back up. Yeah. Right. Negative cosine will start at the bottom go up and then come back down. How you know the difference between a sign or negative sign and regular cosine? Turns out, so we're, we'll get there, but it turns out uh, you can do, they're both sort of one the same equation, mm. right? Just one is shifted over by a certain amount. Okay. Got it? I, I guess. I guess. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you figured out that one. So is it negative two sine x plus one? You're, you're really close. You're missing. So there, your, your function has a b. Oh. Uh, I don't know what the b would be, actually. So what's your period? my period for, yeah for your for yours i don't know oh oh i don't i actually for like that's like the only one i don't remember to do i got everything except for the period okay how long does it take your function to repeat um how long does it repeat is it to the period nope how long like uh to the midline i mean no, no, no. So uh, your graph, right? Mm -hmm. How long do you got to go on the x-axis before you know it starts to repeat? Oh, like where... It... How do I say this? Uh, so when does it... Re... So when does it start to repeat? Or when does it... When's the start line and when does it end? Right. Is it like zero and uh, four pi? Exactly. Okay. You notice that it starts to repeat, right? So if you go from zero to four pi, right? Yeah. That's one squiggle, right? Yeah. After that, it just starts to repeat over and over and over again, right? Yeah. Okay. So you know your period is four pi. Yeah. Find my B. Uh, we're using sine... You're using that two pi over b thing. Two pi over b. Yeah. So check above. Check above. Oh. Yep. Check the example. I'm gonna go mess with another group. Okay.
Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you guys hate me? Um, I think I get it. I'm not sure if I did it right, but like for the most part, I understand what was going on. Okay, what'd you guys get? Let me get my paper. Okay. I got the. Oh wait, I just realized we were supposed to um write the function. Um, yeah. I just wrote the amplitude I got was two. The period is pi. Um, the phase shift or whatever is what confused me, and I just put no phase shift. Then the midline, I put y equals two. Okay, you got most of everything. Yay! I got a different amplitude. What'd you get for amplitude? One. Why one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, let me share my screen with you guys really quick. Okay, so if you look back at the example, right, the amplitude is the distance from the midline, right, to right. the tippy top or the very bottom, right? So it's right. one of these two. Well, it's both of these, right? Make sense? So yeah. this one, my, am my amplitude was three because it went from one to four, right? Make sense? Yeah. So here, for your guys, is, you guys are number three, right? Yeah. What do you guys got? So you guys know what the midline is, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how much does it go up? Two. And how much does it go down? See, that's why I'm so confused because don't they, um, like each line, isn't that point 0.5? Exactly. So, what? Oh, was... shit. <laughs> that means one. Yeah, this is one right here. So, what's your amplitude? One, right? One. Yeah. Got it? Yep. Okay. So that's how I got one. Yeah. Answer your question. Yep. I like it. Okay. Uh, I think it said find the formula for it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you got most of it. So I want you to try to make the formula for it now. Wait, is it? How do we know if it's a sine or cosine function? Which one would you want to use in this case? Sign. Why sign? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I just chose sign. So it turns out there, there is no difference, right? Mm -hmm. Let me show you guys why, OK? What if I use? What if I just use this strip right? Let me actually blow it up a little bit. What if I use this strip right here? Which one should I use, sine or cosine? Cosine. Right. Do I have a phase shift in this case? Negative. Uh-uh, phase shift. Do I move it left or right at all? Oh, no. No, because it started up top and it ended up top, right? Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. What if I use this piece right here? Then you do have a phase shift. I do have a phase shift, right? And then I would use which one, sine or cosine? Cosine. No. Mm -hmm. Look at this squiggle. Well, if it's not cosine, then the only other right. answer is sine. <laughs> uh, right, yeah. So notice that this one, the best idea to use would be sine, right? Mm -hmm. 
but I had moved it over by an amount, didn't I? Yeah, so if you weren't moving it over, you'd use cosine. Right, exactly. So that's why it doesn't it doesn't matter which one you use so long as uh, you uh, point out the phase shift, whichever direction you're going to do. Okay, that's simple enough. Yeah. So in this one, since you guys are starting up here, right, and going down like this, right, mm -hmm. that's a cosine graph. Got it? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go bug another group. I want you guys to find the equation for it. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you guys got a hard one. You guys got a hard one. You guys even here? I feel it. <laughs> What'd you guys get for any of it? The hard part for you guys is that period or that phase shift or whatever that is. So what'd you guys get? Um, we didn't talk about it. I don't know if they're here, but would the amplitude be two? What would the amplitude be two? I have no idea. You have a hunch, but you haven't given me a reason why the hunch is true. <laughs> So how about this? Did you find the midline? I think the midline's at one. Okay. And how high up does it go and how far down does it go? Two. Right. <laughs> does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. So let me share you, let me share a screen. A little bit of that. Let me share my screen with you guys. Steve. 2.5 and eh, close. It, it, was actually, it was actually two. So let me share my screen with you guys. So you guys need an added bit of information. And that added bit of information is this. Uh, this point right here. Who's outside? Me. Is that you, Madison? Yes, it is. Are, are you like in your backyard or something? Or Yeah, I'm in my backyard. So that point that I just pointed out to everybody right here is 2 pi divided by 3. It's 2 pi over 3. That's the added piece of information that you guys need. Okay, that was the only part that I didn't get. Yeah, I know. Now, using that, so you guys have the midline, you guys have uh, the amplitude. You guys know what that point is. I think you can find the B after that. Yeah? Oh, which graph are you going to use, sine or cosine? Anybody? We using sine or we using cosine? Okay. 
I'm gonna go bug another group. I think you guys are are busy compute computerizing. We could like visually see the period on a graph. We could take that number, make it equal to two pi divided by b, and then solve for b that way. Is that right? Yes. Hooray. Wait, what? <laughs> So our, so we can see on, on our graph that mm -hmm. from zero to two pi, that's our period. Yeah. That's it for this graph and this equation. But the, the, the equation for a period, no matter what graph we're looking at, is two pi over b. Yeah. So if we set our period equal to two pi over b, we could solve for b, and that would be our b for the the graph and the, the function that we're looking at right now, which would be one. Yeah. Because two pi divided by one equals two pi. Okay. So we just, wherever the next point is that matches one at zero. Yeah, so whenever period? the graph goes like a full okay. on, that, that's our period, yeah. You can visually okay. see the period. You don't have to solve for a period, but you can take the equation for the period and equal, like make it equal to what you visually see on your graph and then solve for B that way. All right. That's right, right, Julio? Yep. Okay. And then once you have your B, you can figure out your C. And we just didn't have any C if you don't have a phase shift at all. So zero divided by one is still zero. Pluto, is this the answer for uh, for one? Which one? Is this the answer for one? I don't know what the answer for one is. Um, are you trying to show it to me right now? In the text. Oh, 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 let me. You put it in here in the chat. Let me see. Yep. That looks about right. Nice. Uh, wait. Something's missing. What's missing? I don't know. What? <laughs> What's missing? We don't have any phase shifts, so there wouldn't be a, a C. Our B is just a one, so we don't have to put it in there. Right. So, and, and we have... Oh, the negative. What negative? Oh, right in front of the point 0.5. My oh, bad. Wow. I have it right there. Oh, wait. Why is it doing that? <laughs> yeah, why is it doing that? Let's see. Well, yeah, the negative was missing. Oh, OK. Yeah. I had it written down. We had. Yeah. 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 That. Those. Those are the clumsy mistakes that I'm like, nah, that's fine. <laughs> so. Cool. You guys got it. Yes. You guys feel good with it? A little no. bit. Give no. Some more examples. Yeah, I'll do the other one so that people can see uh how they worked out theirs. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me bring people back.
So thumbs up, thumbs down. Are we flinging stuff at the wall yet? Yes, no. Who's left out? Let me see. Well, a couple of people. They'll join us in a little bit. <laughs> How little is he? I used to have a, I don't know, he's eight now. I had a, um, I have a little nephew. He's like in fifth grade. He's about to be a middle schooler. So he's, uh, he's big now. Um, uh, when he was younger, when he was like three or four, um, he was really, really tiny, like super tiny. Even now he's really, really small. Um, <clears throat> we would go visit him and uh, he would uh, even this was even before he was able to speak, he would just take me to a bedroom that had a bed and he just asked me to throw him on it. And he just enjoyed it for some reason. I don't mean like a baseball throw, but just sort of like like a, a, ni a nice little lift where he's not touching the ground and he just plops down on the bed. That's it. Yeah. And then I have a, I have a little niece. I'd be watching TV and I'm just her personal like jungle gym. She just like climbs on my head. Uh, she grabs my leg. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Went to the dark side there. All right. Let's go back to this thing, I'm a Bob. Seems like you guys did okay with it. Usually people are super afraid of this stuff. But you guys were like, nope, we got this. Okay. For number one, let's go ahead and write some stuff in already. Okay. So you guys, uh, for group one, I think you guys said midline was that right there, right? And the amplitude was whatever that amount is. Okay. Uh, did you guys have any phase shift for group one? No, no group, no, no uh, phase shift. So you guys didn't move it left to right. So what uh, function did you guys use? Cosine. Cosine, right. So here f of x is equal to, so you guys had a cosine graph, right? Yeah. Well, what went up front? Negative point five. Cosine of what goes inside? X. Okay. Why why just X? Was there a period change at all? Um no. There was no period change, right? So notice that the period for this graph, right? It starts at zero and ends at two pi. So after that, 
right? There's one squiggle. We didn't have to change anything. And then the, the uh, midline was? 0.5. Right? So then let's go through the, the things, right? The amplitude we got was uh, 0.5. Uh, period. Okay, so this one, right? You guys can see that the period is 2 pi, right? But the question is what, let me actually, so they put in X without anything up front. They're saying that this thing is sort of the, a one, right? So you can visually look at how long it takes for a period to happen, right? One period goes from right here, from zero, all the way over to two pi. So that means that two, so if we use this equation, right? I'm gonna move it over here. T is equal to two pi over B, right? We know that the period is two pi. So that gives us what we need to plug in for T. Okay, so then that means the two pi is equal to two pi over B which implies B is equal to one. And that's how we figure out that that number up there is indeed just one. Got it? We didn't move it left to right. So that's a none and then midline That that one is 0.5. You guys want to stop me? Whatever you guys want. If you guys want to stop me? Just stop me. See, I'll, do, I'll do this one later. Let me go down to three. What'd you guys get for group three? Um, what equation did you guys get? Sine of two X plus two. Sine of two X plus two. Well, that's what I got. Okay. Let's see if it all works out. So you guys are saying that the number that goes up front here is a one. Yeah. Right? So let's go through both of these together and find the, the, the couple things. Amplitude, uh, period, uh, phase shift, and midline. Okay. Amplitude, how far up and how far down from the midline does it go? One. One. So notice how it goes up and down by one. So that takes care of that thing. We have that explained, right? Got it? Yeah. Okay. So you guys said the period is what? Pi. You guys said period is pi. So if you take a look at the picture, right? The initial hump is right there. And the second hump is over there, right? That's one squiggle. Is that a bird? Yeah. <laughs> have you guys seen that like um, coyotes have been coming down to like those uh, those really, really populated beaches in San Francisco now? Like you would never see a coyote on that beach ever in any beach in San Francisco. And now they're just like walking around like nothing. So we have our period, right? 
we know that it's pi, but we need that b. We need to sort of figure out why that's a two, right? So our period is pi. So we go back to what we did in example one. We use this equation, right? T is equal to two pi over b, right? Our period is pi, so pi has to be equal to that two pi divided by b, right? This points out that b is equal to two. So that answers this thing. So that gives us that thing. Did we move our function left to right? No. Nope. So this one's none. And midline. Is two. Right. Y is equal to two. And that actually answers the plus two at the end. I have a question. Yeah. So if we just have like this graph here, the way I look and see if it's sine or cosine is the line of symmetry. Uh huh. But if there's a phase shift, wouldn't it make it hard to determine if it's sine or cosine? Because then we're not just looking at whether it's symmetrical over the y axis or. Right. Uh huh. So if there was a phase shift, how would we know if it was sine or cosine? So it actually doesn't matter which one you use. So let me, let me make this point with this graph that's here, right? So I guess, yeah, they're both the same equation, but like. Right. So it depends, it depends on which one you want to use. So for example, right, let's say we take this chunk right here. Right. This one would tell me that I would need to use cosine, right? And that I have no phase shift. Right? Because it's one squiggle, it starts up top, goes down, goes back up. That looks like cosine. And I'm not moving it left to right. Okay. This group for uh, example three, let's say they had used this one. Oh, sorry. I stopped too early to there, right? Now, using this one, right, this squiggle looks much more like a sine graph than a cosine one, right? And if I do use sine, right, now I can see I actually have an amount of a phase shift here. So back to, to, to answering uh, uh, Joseph's question, uh, it doesn't matter which graph you use, but depending on the one that you use, you would have to find out the phase shift, okay? So and in this case, you had a positive phase shift of pi over four. And then if we were to do sine on this one, then the A would be a negative number. Exactly. But then the two equations would give us the same result on the graph? Exactly. Okay. So the equivalent for this one, oh boy. Oh, oh, oh. So number uh, group three. I just realized the problem with what the equation that you guys wrote down. It's supposed to be cosine. It's supposed to be cosine. Group three, does that make sense? Yay, nay. Nay. So I got one nay. 
And where's my chat box? For some reason, my chat box. Oh, there it is. Yeah, OK. One yay, one nay. OK, so depending on where the hell is my chat box? Oh, there it is. It could be either way. Right. It could be either way, but so the one that you guys chose uh, didn't take into account the phase shift. So if you left it, so for example, if we use the cosine one, right? That graph right there looks like a cosine, right? So that's where we got to make the judgment. If we go back up here to the graphs of both of them separately. Next. The one that starts up top, drops, and then goes back up, that one is a cosine, right? And the one that starts in the middle, goes up, and then back down, and then back to the middle, that's a sine. Okay. So, that's the only problem I found there, okay? Now, let me go back to answering uh, Joseph's question. So depending on which one we use, right? We'd have to take into, whoa. We'd have to take into account for that particular equation. So for this one, the equivalent you can do is uh, sine x minus pi over 4. I think this might be a plus 2. So then this takes care of, let me put it this way. Let me actually lasso this really quick. Okay, so if we use this strip right here, right? Then we are doing this function. Okay. And if we are using this strip right here, then we are using g of x. And technically they're equal to each other, correct? They to each other right they will produce the same thing so that's why it doesn't matter which one you choose but once you make a choice you have to uh, sort of, uh, take into account the rest of the stuff for it got it, got it? oh that hurt Okay. You guys want to try number three really quick? Or should we take a break? I, I, how much is left? Let's see. Let's do this one. Let's do this one and then we'll take a break and then we'll continue with the rest. Yeah. Okay. So this one required an additional piece of information. This was actually the one, the two pi over three. This one was the one that I actually wanted to cover. 
that was really difficult for people. So group three, I gave you guys the additional piece of information. What equation did you guys get for it? Group three is leaving me. Where's group three at? Um, I didn't get the period. Okay. But other than that, I got two sine, and then there's the parenthesis x, and then plus one. And then I don't think there's a phase shift. Two sine of stuff, and then you said plus one? Yeah. Okay. Why the two? Um, because it's two up from the midline and two down from the midline. Right. So midline. It's always a good idea to figure out what the midline is. Right. So there's our midline. That seems to be at one. So that answers this one. Right. This thing climbs up and down by two. So that answers uh, this thing right here. So the only thing that's missing is this stuff right here. What the hell goes in there? We know it's something times x, but that's it. Okay, so now we'll, let's go ahead and do all the four parts. And then once we get to the period, we'll figure that one out. So then amplitude according to our graph was two. And that's verified from our equation. So we're good there with period. So this is where we have to do the T is equal to the two pi over B. In this case, right? Let's look at one squiggle. So one squiggle happens from here to here. Actually, let me change the color of that. So one squiggle goes from zero to two pi over three. So we use that here, two pi, whoa, 2 pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi divided by b. This sort of immediately gives it to us, right? b is equal to 3. Group three make the uh, sorry, group two. Does this make sense? I uh, you can say no. No, it does now. I was setting it up differently. Ah, okay. But we're good now, right? Yes. Okay. Woo. Okay. Period's done. Phase shift. None. So notice we didn't move the graph for sine either left or right. But we're done. And then midline uh, y is equal to 1. How's that feel for people? I hope better than usual. Okay, yeah. So there we go. So for the last, for these last three, we didn't have a phase shift at all. Right? 
So once we get into the next example, notice this one will have a phase shift. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break. So go do something, go walk around, have yourself a Pablo Escobar moment. And I'll give you guys the last answer for this one. Whoa. My bad.
All right, we back. All right, let's bring it back. So I looked at the calendar uh, for the rest of the semester and we're actually making pretty good time. We're actually not doing too bad. We're not doing too shabby. Um, to the point where this might seem like we're moving a little slow, but that's good. All right, you guys ready? I'm surprised we haven't lost anybody. Did anybody, did the system ask anyone 
Did Zoom ask anyone to input a password this time around? I guess so. No. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. That's good to know because uh, I was worried that people had to do the um, the password thing again today. If you did, let me know. But it doesn't seem like it did. I I turned it off maybe right before class, and I know some. I've, I've noticed sometimes it takes a little while to to pick up on it. But yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this example. Okay, so before I gave you guys a graph, asked you guys to sort of figure out the bits and pieces of it, right? And then give me the equation, right? This time we're going the other way around. I'm giving you guys the equation. You guys are going to find the bits and pieces of it, and then we're going to try to graph it. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is since this time around, we do have something funky in here. Right. Since we have something, uh, since we have something a little weirder in there, right, we have to do a, a couple of things before we move completely in and start naming stuff. Right. So let's go back up to the notes here, right? The idea is we need to get them to match up to that because now we might have a phase shift. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to rewrite the dang thing down here. So y is equal to minus 2 cosine of pi over 2x plus pi plus 3. So I want to rewrite that stuff that's in parentheses, right? So equal to, so minus 2 cosine that stays there okay but now i need to factor out this thing this well this amount right here right so that's going to be uh <clears throat> pi over two and the thing that gets left is x plus pi divided by pi over two plus three, okay? This stuff can be reduced. So I'm gonna do it over here, right? It's gonna be pi over one divided by pi over two, right? That's equivalent to pi over one times two over pi. So remember, if we are dividing fractions, we can uh, flip the second one and turn it into an, a multiplication, right? So cancels there, cancels there, is equal to one, oh, sorry, two over one, which is equal to two. So we have it all rewritten, minus two cosine pi over two x plus two plus three. Let me go ahead and call this f of x. Did I lose people? Does that make sense?
why did I divide by pi over two? So notice that our function, right? Notice that our formula actually has stuff integrate, there we go. It has stuff in there this time, right? My tablet's acting up, come on. We actually have stuff in there now. There's actually stuff inside those parentheses. So that tells us that we're going to have a phase shift. So we need to take into the, we need to take that into account. So we have our formulas up here, right? So before, right, our C was zero. So we didn't have to worry about anything. Yay. But now our C is actually something. Right? So now we have to write them this way. So that's why I had to divide by the pi over 2. So that b, in this case, was pi over 2. OK? So when you have a phase shift of some sort, it would help if you write it this way. Okay, now why? Well, because our rewrite gives us how much our phase shift is, right? So now, now I'm jumping the gun. Um, let's go ahead and do the four things, right? Amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical shift. So amplitude. So according to my new function now, so instead of using that one up there, we're going to use this one. They're the same, except the rewrite helps us point out some stuff, right? What's my amplitude? Right, it's minus two. So, well, it's, it's just two. We just know it goes downward first. Does that make sense? So whatever you talk about the amplitude is actually just the distance from the midline up or midline down, okay? Uh, period. So this is where we have to do t is equal to two pi over b, right? Our b is that pi over two, right? So we're gonna do uh, two pi divided by pi over two, so two pi over one divided by uh, pi over two, right? Which is equivalent to turning this into uh, a multiplication of two over pi. The pi's cancel. I get left with 2 over 1 times 2 over 1, which is 4. So we have to have one squiggle <clears throat> that fits into four of these slots. What does that mean? I'll get to it when we start actually drawing a picture of this. OK. Phase shift. What do you guys think the phase shift is? Phase shift. Phase shift. It flips. N -uh. Well. Because yes. it's a negative, right? Huh? Because it's a negative, doesn't it flip? Right. So, what is the phase shift? What direction? Oh, it doesn't. Oh, it moves to the left three times. Not three times. Not three times. Not three times. Oh. Left turn. G 
few times. All right. So that comes from, so if we're looking at our new equation, right? That two times comes from that two. I should label stuff, huh? Our period, the B that we're gonna be using is that thing right there. And then the two is the amplitude there. So we know that we need to move left by two. Right? And then last thing, midline. Y equals positive three. That one's an easy one. Okay, so. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is because we don't have enough um, me, uh, I know the dark line is there. Oh, I love this thing. Here we go. All right, what are you doing? Oh, this thing is genius. Can I grab it? Come on. You know what? I'm going to do it this way. So I know that there's a dark line there already. However, we're gonna need to move it over a little bit. So I'm gonna draw the, redraw that nice dark line. All right, that's close enough. So then this is my uh, Y axis now. Just so that we have enough space to take care of our phase shift. Because if we moved it left from that other one, we won't have enough space, okay? Okay, that's all we needed to do. Uh, now we can actually start graphing stuff. So our midline is Y equal three. Right, so we know that our graph has to go the middle line, that thing that slices each one of them together, right? Is right there, okay? We need to move this thing left by two. So, One of our points has to start there. Our period goes for four. So from negative two, which is where our graph is gonna start, we need to go four to our uh, right. One, two, three, four. So we know that between here and here, we need one period of our function. Okay, and then lastly, we need an amplitude of two. So we need to go up and down by two. So our graph should be bouncing somewhere between here and here. Did I lose anybody? Okay. So, 
the last thing we haven't taken into account has been that negative that's up front, right? So that negative tells us it is uh, going to flip, right? So from the positive graphs that were up in the very beginning of the chapter, from the positive graphs, we're just going to be flipping those. Okay, so we know that our graph starts here, right, because it's negative, has to go up to here, and then back down to here. Right? And we know that this thing is uh, periodic, so it repeats. So it goes back up here, and then back down here, back up here, and back down here. So here we go. We've got enough. <clears throat> so back to kindergarten. There's one period. There's two periods. There's three periods, right? And notice how I'm just going to repeat, rinse and repeat. Four periods. Right, and then this thing goes in the other direction as well. So on and so forth. Did I lose people? Do people hate me yet? Pretty sure a lot of you guys do. Stop me if you need me. Okay. I got a couple of quick checks for people to do. Um, in this case, uh, I'm only going to split you guys. Well, no, I'm going to split you guys up into the four groups. Um, uh, groups one and three do this first one, which is a sine graph. And groups two and four do the second one, which is a cosine graph. Okay. Let me break you guys up into your groups. I think this might be it after this because it's group work after this. Okay, and go. Can you just go down a little bit, please? There? Yeah, thank you. I'm just trying to get the formula before I leave. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh -huh.
Thumbs up, thumbs down. <clears throat> I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. You guys got a little bit, so. Let me go bug another group. Thumbs up, thumbs down. In the middle. In the middle, okay. Are you guys still working on it? I am. Okay. This is very much the, the harder direction. I, I give you guys a, an equation and you guys graph it. I think I got it, but I'm not like a hundred percent sure. Okay. Let's see. Well, let's, let's, let's go to the beef of the sandwich. Yeah. Um, what do you guys get for B? For B I got pie. Mm hmm which makes your period what? Zero? Mm-mm. A period, period. Oh, period, period, period. Uh... That's what I got for my period. Because mm. I did two pi over B. Right. And, and then it's equal to two pi over two since the, the, the one. The... Two. No? Uh-uh. <clears throat> so you have to divide it's supposed to be the two pi divided by b right mm -hmm. so it's supposed to be so and so what's a b oh pi so it's two pi divided by pi right So if it's two pi divided by pi, then two pi over one, then this is one. It'd be two. Right. Extra period. Right. So one squiggle has got to fit in two. Okay, I think you guys are making progress. Let me go mess with another group. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Doing okay, doing not okay. Throwing stuff at the wall. I'm going to take the silence as the gears are churning. Not a freaking clue. What do you mean not a freaking clue? <laughs> Follow the, the example from up above. So first thing you want to do is try to rewrite the equation.
Okay. So you guys are group three, right? Yeah. So what's the rewrite? <clears throat> what's the rewrite? No idea. So let me show you guys the screen really quick. So let me actually go up a little farther. My thing ever works. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There it is. Okay, these. <laughs> Rewrite them like this. So you're grabbing, you have to grab the equation itself, right? Which looks like one of these two, right? Yeah. And you gotta change it into one of these. And all that's happening really is, you see that B, right? Yeah. You're factoring that out. So in the example that you guys are working on, My thing ever hurries up, there we go. In the example that you guys are working on, which is the sine one, right? Uh-huh. Right, so you have to f sort of factor out that two, right? So it's gonna be something that looks like this now. Uh, it's gonna be something that looks like this now, right? Three sine of two, time stuff in there now, minus one. Got it? So would it be a three sine um, two, then x plus pi, and then minus one? Yep. <clears throat> Now that gives you all of it. So now you can do the rest that I did for the example up above where I started to find the amplitude, period, phase shift, midline. Got it? Libby? Um, <laughs> Almost. I'm not quite there yet. Okay. I'll let you play around for it a little longer. I got one more group to mess with. All right. Okay. You guys. Well, you guy. Just three. It's just three. <laughs> yeah. No, I noticed, um, uh, um, I think Mohammed and somebody else is in here as well. Yeah. Mm. I don't think, I think Mohammed's been having problems with his mic, so that's why he doesn't even join. Mm. Okay. So I don't have enough paper to make a natural graph. Uh, oh, yeah, no, that's fine. Do a sketch. You can sketch it. 
<clears throat> okay. And try your best to like to to do the sketch like as neatly as possible. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, but I do have the points. I think I have it right. Okay. Um, the amp is two. The period is uh two. I I don't know if the my face shift is right. I got one uh, one fourth. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then my Y is two. I like it. Okay. Then yeah, that's basically what I got. And then all I had to do now is just uh, graph it, right? Graph it, right. And then that's it. That's it. Okay. Then yeah, I got it. Cool. Okay. Okay. I think I'm gonna call people in really quick. Okay. This class is almost over. We might have. 10 minutes to cover this and that's it. Okay. Because. Because I do. Yeah, but I have, I'm carrying shit. Me retas después. Okay. And everybody back? I think so. Three seconds, two seconds, one second now. Okay. <clears throat> How was that? You guys do okay? I think so. Okay. From what I heard from everybody, everybody had like the, how to find the things, right? I think the trouble was how to graph it. I think I got, I understand the graph more than the than the other parts yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me do that this first one. Let me do the two, these two. Um this would be enough, I think, for you guys to do the homework uh online, uh, which I haven't put up yet. I'll put it up right after class. Um this'll be enough for you guys to try the homework online. Um so I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys do that. Uh, we'll finish up the rest of this because there's only just one thing left here. Um, one example here. Um, and then I'm going to give you guys some group work time, uh, lecture question time on Wednesday for you guys to try some of the problems out. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Cool. Okay. But now these two. So the first one, I already did the rewrite. Okay. So we need to do, how about we start labeling stuff out? So here's my A, right? This is my uh, B. You're not screen sharing. All right, we can't oh. see your screen. Ah, okay. Let me see. I can't see your screen. You're not sharing screen. Okay. Well, at least it's just that. Let's see. Uh, let me make a big share screen. Boom. Okay, share screen. How about now? Does it? There yeah. we go. I think it's going now. Yeah. Okay. So we have the A, the B, the C, and the D, right? So we need to change it to A sine B X. Let's do minus. Uh, well, in this case, it's going to be plus. Uh, C divided by B uh, minus D in this case, right? Because it's a minus. Ooh. Okay. So it's going to be the three sine. My B is the two. 
and then it's going to be x plus c divided by b so it's going to be this divided by that which is going to be 2 pi over 2 minus 1 2 pi over 2 reduces down to pi okay we're practically golden we are scot free here right so amplitude is what? Three. Three. Uh, period. Two. How'd you get that? Because. Because what? So how do we find a period? Isn't that like when it um, starts repeating itself? Right, but how? what's the formula for it? Two pi divided by b. Right, it's the two pi divided by b. So we have to do the t two pi over b. We know what our b is, it's two. It's gonna be two pi over two. The twos cancel, we get left with pi. So it's not just that b, you have to do the little math of it. <clears throat> so in this case, our period is gonna be pi. So one squiggle has to fit inside pi. Phase shift. What is my phase shift in this case? Are we moving left or right and how much? We're moving left pi. Right, left by pi, right? And uh, the midline? Is going to be what? Negative one. Right. Okay, so. Like I did before, I'm going to move, I know that there's already a dark line there, but I'm going to move it over a little bit so we can have a little bit more space. I'm gonna move it up to here. So this is now gonna be my y-axis. Now we're gonna start all the good stuff, okay? My midline is negative one. Uh, phase shift left by pi. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm gonna go one, two, three. Four. I'm going to make that old dark line. That's going to be pi. My period is pi. So, so this is actually negative pi. Sorry. My period is pi, so I'm going to start there and I'm going to go pi to the right, and that's and it just so happens to be up to right here. I need to actually draw it in with a nice color up to right here. So my graph has to one squiggle has to fit between there and there. Right, and then the last thing is amplitude by three. Right, so how high am I gonna go and how low am I gonna go? I'm gonna go up to what and down to what? I'm gonna go up to positive two and down to negative four. 
Right, up to two and down to one, two, three, four, down to negative four. Got it? And since this is a sine graph, right? It's gonna go up to here, 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 here. There's no flip. You guys see that? So it's good old regular sign. So one squiggle is right there. And since this thing repeats, we can just go ahead and go up, down, down again, up again, up, down, down again, up. So then we go up to here, back down, up to here, back down, up to here, and it repeats over and over and over again. Cool? Well, well now. <laughs> Oh, my bad. Sorry. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure people were thinking it, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, for today, class is done. It's done, Zos. I actually took two more minutes than I was supposed to. People feeling good with it? Kind of. Okay. It's good to know. Okay. All right. I'll stick around for maybe a good five more minutes if people got questions for me. Besides that, we are done. Have yourselves a nice day. Go wash your hands. Be safe. You uploaded over previous week. Pretty sure I have. Yeah, pretty sure I have all the previous YouTube videos up. So I think this is the last one that's not been uh, uploaded. And I'll do that right now. Actually, let me double check. Let me double check right now before I myself have all the videos.
<laughs> Remember, sometimes there's a, um, uh, yeah, sometimes there's a, uh, it doesn't completely upload. And then my computer turns off and then it sort of maybe has half of it. Um, do go here. Go home. I checked, I think the first one and the last before the exam was not uploaded. Okay, let me see. One fifty five vehicle playlist. Sixteen, eighteen, eighteen, part two, twenty three, twenty five, video deleted, four, six, four, eight. It didn't finish uploading. Ah, uh, dang it. Okay. Uh, let me upload them right now. Let me try it again. Um, so you guys can have it. Okay. Okay. That's right here, okay. Okay, let me see where did they go off oh, the train. Let me go. Okay. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Today is four twenty. That one's not done yet. Okay, so if sixteen is Thursday. Go from the night this Thursday. The thirteenth is you guys. And then fifteenth is you guys. Okay, and then the twentieth is right now. Okay. Wait, wasn't the ninth you guys too? No. Okay.
list. Okay, I'm just getting back to the chat. It is not in the files. Uh, it is in the um, uh, the homepage. The homepage for um, the course. So if you go to um, your Canvas page, click on the Canvas page for this course. Um, there's a link that says lecture videos. That's the quickest way to go and find it. So I have them separated into playlists. So so long as you um, go in there and click on um, the uh, playlist option and look for 155. OK. So which ones have I done? Which ones are up and which ones are not? For eight. The 13th and then the 15th. Okay. Create new. Okay. The thirteenth. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> No, it is not made for kids. Next. Next. Public. Publish. Close. All right. Uh, Mohammed, the older videos are being uploaded right now. Upload. <laughs> Two. Oh, five precal. Um, hit next, next, public, finish. And then one more. Okay, let me open up this last one. I don't know if it, anybody's been on the chat box. So let me do this last one and I'll I'll look back at the chat really quickly. Um, yeah. Lecture. Four. Fifteen. Twenty. <laughs> Five done. Not made for 
kids next next topic. Okay. Muhammad, all three of the videos are going up. If you're still there, are you still there? Are you still there? Yep, people are still there. <laughs> okay. Oh, chat box. Chat box. First day in mean, 413. 13's going up right now. It's in two parts. So I think I remember the 13th. Uh, the 13th is when uh, my my entire, uh, all of my Zoom stuff just completely froze and, and closed on me. So that's why there's two parts. So let me double check on how they're doing. I think part one is done and then part two is going up still and part three is going up still. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna uh, let you guys go. Uh, I need to go eat lunch before my uh, lab hours. That happens in about half an hour. Okay. Um, if anything, you guys can ask me questions in the lab hours if you need to. Okay. Oh, something happened there. What about 316, the first video? That's there. It's 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 on the YouTube page. Okay. 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 I'm I'm gonna end it for everybody. Um, go eat something. Stay safe. Be safe. Wash your hands. Yep. See you later.